Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back once again to Solid Gold and welcome to my fish room. I'm hanging out out in the fish room here today with you guys just to give you an update on a few of the animals out here, but most importantly to give you guys an update on my new fish in quarantine. I've had these guys in quarantine now officially for two weeks exactly to the day. It usually takes a couple of weeks at least after fish have been shipped to you for issues to start manifesting if you're gonna see any issues at all. The stress response of the fish is such that the fish will get stressed and then it has a weakened immune system and it's susceptible to opportunistic pathogens setting in. Even if the fish came to you in perfect health, lo and behold, I am not exempt from the dreaded two week mark. I have one fish who is showing a little bit of issues, but the other four are perfectly fine. So I'll show you guys all the fish, give you a little update on them, just to hopefully give you guys an idea of what you can expect when you have live goldfish shipped to you and you're going through the quarantine process. And maybe show you guys around at some of the other animals in here too, if we have time after that. So here are my new guys. As you can clearly see, I have now four fish up here in the top aquarium. And then I have this guy down here who has been separated off to himself. So I'll just give you guys an update on all of these guys first. This is Kai, he's the male red and white butterfly telescope. He's more like Melina than he is like Nalu. He's kind of clueless, he just hangs out there in the back until he smells food or notices other fish are eating. And then he'll come like crashing forward to the front of the tank like a crazy fish. So pretty entertaining. And then we've got this ingot aranda dude here. This is a male too. I do believe, although I'm not 100% sure. He still doesn't have a name, so you guys gotta help me out with a name on this guy. Here's Toast. Toast, I found out from Ken after my first video, is a female, and she has had, she's gonna hide, I guess, but she's so cute. She's really camera shy. Toast is a female. Ken told me that she has had several batches of eggs already in the five months that he's had her. So that's kind of exciting, but also scary. Females always scare me a little bit because there's such a huge potential for egg binding. That's when the eggs get stuck in the fish's body and they can't release them for whatever reason. There are some things you can do to prevent that, but once it happens, it's really, really tough to bring the fish back to health because it gets an internal bacterial infection as the eggs sit in there and rot and that's just a really difficult thing to treat properly. I'm a little concerned about that for Toast here going forward in the future only because Ken said that she sometimes does need help with her eggs. Sometimes she'll have like a hard little clump of eggs that needs help being gently squeezed out. So that makes me nervous. I'll have to keep a close eye on this girl. Hopefully she won't be a problem child for me. And then Jelly Bean the Pearl Scale is doing excellent. This one is also a male, and a lot of people who aren't very familiar with goldfish were kind of confused about why this one looks so much weirder than the other ones. I mean, all goldfish look kind of weird, let's be honest. In a cute way, of course, but still weird. Little jelly bean here definitely does look a little weirder than everybody else, but personally, I love it. <laughs> I think it's cute. Jelly bean is a crowned pearl scale. A lot like marshmallow, who is a pearl scale, but with the added crown on top. It's the same kind of tissue that orandas have all over their heads. It's called a wen. In pearl scales, it's also called a wen. It just usually takes on a different shape than it does in an aranda and a different placement on the head. But yeah, that's why he looks like that. And then he's extra chubby compared to the other ones because he's a pearl scale and that is normal for pearl scales. Every single scale has like a little white raised bump on it. That's why they're called pearl scales, because it looks like their scales are made of little pearls. Clearly all these guys are doing really well. And then we'll go down here to this guy. He's still unnamed, by the way. This is the one having an issue. Of course, it always has to be your favorite one. That's the one having the issue. This is the biggest fish out of all five of them. Definitely a two-hander fish. You have to use two hands whenever transporting this fish. Big, huge fish. So that means that in shipping, he's gonna be thrashing around just like the other ones, but because he's so much bigger, he's gonna have the potential to do a lot more damage to his fins while he's being shipped. So that's what happened in this case. He arrived with a little break on the leading ray of his dorsal fin, which is a very one of the most common, I would say, shipping injuries, if there are going to be any shipping injuries at all. As we've seen, I got five fish shipped to me and only one had 
sustained any injuries from that. So it's, it's actually really rare that fish will be injured in shipping, but when it does happen, I would say the dorsal fin break is probably one of the more common things you'll see. He also had a little bit of a tail fin break right in the middle of one of the lobes of his tail fins. There's always bacteria present in the environment, by the way. There's good and bad bacteria all around us at all times, and aquariums are no exception from this. And these bad bacteria are just kind of laying dormant in the environment, existing at really low levels, not enough to cause any problems, and they're just kind of laying in wait, waiting for their opportunity to strike. Now when a fish has a weakened immune system and it also has an existing open wound, those bacteria are obviously going to be able to penetrate the wound and set up shop and start an infection in there. So that's what has happened with this fish, unfortunately. He's got a little bit of an infection in both of those places on his fins and it really just popped up overnight. I had been keeping a really close eye on those problem areas on that fish for the past two weeks every single day and he was fine one day and the next day it was red and inflamed with obvious signs of infection. The fin tissue is really easily accessible and easily penetrated by medications in the water. However, he also has a little bit of an infection, very similar kind of infection right behind one eye. So unfortunately, I think that means that the infection has really kind of set in and, and started traveling to other parts of the fish's body. Thankfully, I was prepared with a variety of different fish medications on hand, so I was able to treat him for it right away. I definitely advocate for having a little fishy first aid kit. I usually recommend that people have aquarium salt, sometimes even Epsom salt can be really helpful, hydrogen peroxide, praziquantel, metronidazole, sometimes even Canaplex is a really good one to have, some type of dewormer like Levamisol, Thankfully, I had all of those things and even more medications because I'm a medication hoarder, I guess. So I started treating this fish immediately as soon as I noticed there was a problem. And that was Sunday night, so two days ago now. And after the first 24 hours of treatment, he was already looking much improved, which is really, really encouraging to see. The medication I chose to use in this situation is oxolium. The main ingredient is oxalinic acid. And I chose this one because for one thing, it's a favored medication among other hobbyist goldfish breeders here in the US. And for another thing, I've used it in the past before with fin issues and had really good success. So it's a pretty broad spectrum antibiotic that is pretty powerful and works for a variety of different bacterial issues that fish can have. So every single day since then, I've been redosing the oxolium and doing a 100% water change. Additionally, today I decided to give him a little swab of hydrogen peroxide. Now the reason I did this is because it can be helpful with open sores, especially if your fish isn't extremely stressed out by handling. So I took a little cotton swab, dipped it in hydrogen peroxide, and applied it to the affected areas. I made sure to hold him gently a little bit out of the water while I was doing this, just so that the hydrogen peroxide didn't get washed away immediately and had a chance to kind of sink into the wound. And the reason I did the hydrogen peroxide swab was just because it is a fresh open wound still, I wanted to make sure that I was sanitizing it to keep other opportunistic pathogens from kind of joining the party, so to speak. If it doesn't seem to be getting drastically better in the next one or two days, I may even start him on some medicated gel food. And if I do that, I'll show you guys how I mix that up too. But so far, we're just sticking with the oxolium in the water and we've already seen some pretty good improvement. So yeah, that's the update on all the new guys. Such little hams, seriously. Let's feed them. <laughs> See, look at how crazy they get when it's feeding time. And Mr. Clueless back there still hasn't noticed. Here he comes. He's like, oh, there's food. So cute. I can't wait until Jelly Bean and Marshmallow are together. They're gonna be the cutest pair in the whole world. Honestly, look at you, so cute. Don't worry, I didn't forget about you. <laughs> Such a little spaz. I still need to name this guy too, and I was thinking about it the other night, and I decided that I want to name him either Miko or Percy. Those are two names that I've always loved from the old Disney Pocahontas movie. I started a poll, there'll be a link to the poll over this video. So if you guys wanna have a say in whether this fish is gonna be named Miko or Percy, 
Click on the poll and let me know what you think. Get better, please. Please get better. Thank you. We can't leave these guys out and look at this. Look who's already on their begging game. Hi, Nalu. Hi, Marshmallow. Hi, Denzel. <laughs> You guys are the cutest. Oh my God, Denzel's face is like the cutest thing I've ever seen. Honestly, so cute. <laughs> I swear you guys, it never gets old. Please don't be mad if there's at least a brief clip of my goldfish eating in every video from now on. It just never gets old. This one I've been watching because he has a little bit of kind of scruffiness to the edges of his fins for no apparent reason. And all the other ones look perfect. So I actually might do a microscope scrape on him later today just to see if there's anything going on. But they've been all treated for flukes recently with Prozzi, so, and nobody is looking sick or acting sick other than that. So it might just be a little quirk that he has. I love them so much and I swear I will never understand when people are like, I hate goldfish, they're so ugly and gross, ew. I mean, what? What planet are you living on? Sylvia. Let's see if Sylvia wants to come out and say hi for a cricket. You want a cricket? You want this? Yeah, come on. Come say hi. Come and get it. Oh. There you go. Good job. That's all you need, because you've already eaten enough today. Look at that. Palmer, what are you doing? A couple things real quick before I end this video, you guys. I'm wearing my Goldfish Council t-shirt today in support of the Goldfish Council. I want to let you guys know about their second annual Goldfish Palooza, which is happening this weekend in San Jose, California. If you're at all in the area, definitely go check it out. I went last year and made a video about it, so if you want to know what to expect, I'll put a link to that video over this video here so you can go check it out. It was a really good time, and sadly I can't go this year, but I'm hoping to be able to go next year. And I I definitely still think you guys should go check it out. The second thing is I have to announce the winners for my giveaway. As you guys know, okay, first I'm really behind on this, so I am so sorry. It's not an excuse, but this year has already been insane. I can't believe that we're already halfway through the year. Like that's, that blows my mind. As you guys know, if you purchased my 2018 calendar, it came with a little cutout postcard for you to send back to me and that would enter you into a giveaway every single month with the prize being one of my goldfish art prints. So I got to announce the winners for April, May, and now for this month, June. For April, we had Shannon Carrillo for, May we had Ren Nakano, and I wanted to show you guys this cute little speech bubble Ren made over Clyde. So cute, thank you Ren. For June we have Tony Dean. So I'll be emailing all three of you guys so you can claim your prize, but congratulations on winning. I guess that's all I had to talk to you guys about today. Don't forget to vote on whether that little guy's name should be Miko or Percy. Send all the good vibes that he's going to get healed up and be back to 100% very soon. Honestly, if it was just the fin issue, I wouldn't be so worried, but because it's also in the tissue behind the eye, that does worry me a little bit. So any good vibes or whatever it is you do would be really appreciated. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, stay gold.